Hey YouTube, Atlas here. Uh, if you're a fan of our show, of Nexus at Night, uh, you may have listened to a recent episode where we talked about interactivity in Vanguard. Uh, and by that, I mean how often you can make the bad guy go bye-bye on the other guy's turn. Um, when people think of that sort of thing, they think of a certain birdie boy or a certain plot twist boy. Well, I just thought I'd take a moment and show you all the clans that can interrupt the opponent's board on their turn. I should note that I'm not including anything that gives your own vanguard extra power on the opponent's turn, outside of triggers, of course, because that doesn't interrupt their board. I mostly mean things that affect the opponent's attack pattern in a tangible way. Uh, a certain exception to this would be something like uh, Light Elemental Honolulu, which, if you call it on the opponent's turn, it means that their attack pattern will certainly be affected because they then have to counterblast for every attack starting with number 5. So why don't we get started? So I'm going to start with the nation that has the least amount of clans that can interrupt the opponent's board and go to the most, because if I start with United Sanctuary, I'm going to burn through all this material before we know it. So I'm going to start with Stargate. To start off, uh, there is a combo between Chaos Breaker Dragon, the V-Series one, where his effect stating that when your opponent's lock card is unlocked, you Soul Blast one, retire one of the unlocked units, draw a card, your opponent removes a total of two markers from his or her circles or protect from their hand, and you get a force marker for each uh, marker removed. Now, retiring the opponent's locked card on their turn isn't so much the thing. I mean, yes, you do prevent that newly unlocked card from attacking, but it also means you can get rid of the opponent's Excel circles with something on them. So that is a direct interruption to their board that they had when they started their battle phase. So the two ways to do that are Lady Searcher of Planetary Materials, which is a grade one that when you guard with it, you can unlock something and give her 5k shield. Uh, ki kind of obtuse. Uh, there's also Genesis Beast Destiny Guardian, which is uh, a G Guardian, where you just unlock two locked cards and then it gets plus 10k shield. That's probably the way you're going to make it happen most of the time. Um, so, Link Joker isn't super relevant competitively these days, but in a world where they can finally catch up to the rest of the meta, this is a way to deal with one of their biggest weaknesses, which is rushing. Other ways that Link Joker can disrupt the opponent's board include Darkness that lights up Demise Lacus Karina. So this is just the dark, uh, the G Guardian by itself. Counter Blast, uh, turn something face up, lock three of your own rear guards. Your opponent locked the same amount in their back row. So that doesn't outright uh, interrupt attacks, but it can mess things up. So like decks that have back row attacks or require a certain booster or something like that, this can be uh, important. Most of the time it just takes power away from their attacks. Um, and then lastly, Freeze Ray Dragon. I didn't know whether I wanted to include this or not, because Freeze Ray Dragon will sit there and your opponent knows what he does when he starts attacking. So does that count as an interruption? And I will say that it does, just because even if you know Freeze Ray is there, it's still going to lock your cards on your turn. That's still interrupting your board. So those are all the ways that Link Joker can mess with your board. Why don't we look at Zoo next? So, I'll start with Mega Colony. Mega Colony is, you know, bugs. Everyone is freaking out about Order Colony, although that recently got killed on the ban list. Uh, Mega Colony's ways of disrupting on the opponent's turn isn't super prevalent. Uh, you have things like Mutant Deity Fort Fortification Rice Fort, which, uh, rest the opponent's back row. So this was more important back in the days of Amber Clones where you needed uh, attacks that boosted. A couple of clans still use their Amber Clones, like Great Nature, which we'll get to in a minute here. But mostly, that, like I said with Lacus Karina, this is mostly just to take the edge off of some larger attacks that might be coming your way. Um, 
Grice Fort mostly just gets a big shield most of the time, but it is something that interrupts the opponent's uh, attack flow. There's Relish Lady, which when your opponent's Vanguard attacks, they either rest two rear guards or you draw a card and counter charge full charge. So what I found playing against Magic Colony, seeing people who play against Magic Colony, you let them get the draw and the rest and the counter charge full charge every time. Um, the problem with this interruption is that it lets the opponent pick. So if they know that, like, I would rather starve the opponent of resources, then sure, they'll rest two rear guards. But most of the time, because it allows the opponent to choose, then it, it, it's just not the, quote, interruption that we're looking for in this particular instance. That doesn't make it a bad card. Uh, it, it fulfills its niche, but just it doesn't do the interruption thing well. Um, we recently got one from Magic Colony, uh, Cruwebel. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. So when you G-Guard with it, you Soul Blast, it gets plus 30k shield off the bat, and then your opponent chooses any number of their rearguards and rests them, and it gets minus 10 for each unit rested. So again, this puts the ability in the opponent's court, which is not something you want in the world of interruption, but it is something that the opponent can do. It is something that can make the opponent rest rear guards to prevent you from getting that shield. I guess this could kind of come down to your bluffing ability if you go, man, it would really suck if the opponent was to rest three rear guards and then you get them to do that, and then all of a sudden that's three less attacks to worry about. Obviously, that's never going to happen in the real world, but you're really good at poker, maybe you can get this to work in your favor in that case. Lastly, uh, there's the original Dark Face. So anybody who was around for Worlds a few years ago, back when Ezel was like a big freaking deal, uh, Intimidating Mutant Dark Face was used as a weird silver bullet because his GB2 was when your opponent's unit is placed on rear, you sold last two and rest it. So the guy who one worlds with this strategy used it to basically just kneecap any gold paladin momentum that may have gotten going. I really think they could have brought this back in V series, but it doesn't seem like they wanted to. And I really think that's a waste of potential, but this is a way to interrupt the opponent's board. On to great nature. So for great nature, we have Omniscient Dragon Almiraj. So this G guard allows you to call uh, two cards from hand to rear guard and then pick four of your rear guards, they get resist, and then even if they are hit, they don't retire. So this seems like a small thing at first, but combine this with Daring Scientist Mari Martin, which is uh, when you play it on Van or Rear, Counter Blast, Soul Blast, mill the top card, and then if it's a trigger unit, retire all of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as this unit. So again, you're thinking, well, how is that going to happen, right? How do I guarantee it? Thanks to the Isabel cards, which mean that every time you mill something and check for normal or trigger unit, it says perform both of the effects. In Isabel decks, they essentially have a Denial Griffin on deck, because Great Nature has a very good grade 3 searching engine, so they'll ride Isabel grab Mari Martin in whatever way they, you know, choose to, and then if they have a, uh, a heal trigger in hand, bam. They have not just a Denial Griffin, but an entire Column Griffin. Bermuda Triangle kind of has one. So they have Highest Society Citron, which is a G-Guard that allows you to uh, call something from your hand onto the field on the opponent's turn. So the idea is to call Light Elemental Hanali, which will then make it so the opponent is going to have to start counterblasting if they want to keep attacking. This is specific depending on what deck you're playing, but it is a disruption nonetheless. Any deck that can call rearguards on the opponent's turn can use Hanali for this purpose. So I'm going to blanket any any strategy that I that I bring up during this video that involves calling rear guards on the opponent's turn, imagine Hanali is also part of it from now on. Okay, cool. That also includes all Mirage that I said earlier. Uh, the other thing for Magdalena, Grand Blue. Grand Blue 
one of the OGs of this sort of thing, actually. Um, they were able to do this, like, e even, like, mid-gear, once you got, like, Night Rose's GB2 and uh, Skeleton Cannon Air. But the combo nowadays is you go uh, Great Witch Doctor of Banquet's Negra Lily, but now you call Ghosty Leader Beatrice, who, when she's played, you Soul Blast 1, call any card not named Ghostly Leader Beatrice from Drops Under Rare, get your Skeleton Cannon Air, blow up their thing, and draw a card. It's such an easy Denial Griffin combo. It, yes, it's technically three cards. One of them is G-Zone, so I won't really count that. Um, but being that this is Grand Blue and you can set up your drop zone pretty much whatever way you like and quickly, uh, it, it, it's just so good. For Spike Brothers, they recently got a card called Cheer Girl Fiona. This is a grade two that when you put it on rear or guard with it, that's the key there, choose one of any player's rear guards and until end of turn it gets plus 10k and the cost for that unit's auto abilities cannot be paid. So to anybody who's played Yu-Gi-Oh! before, this is kind of like an Effect Veiler or a Forbidden Chalice, where if you, depending what you're playing against, you can use it to turn off one of their rear guard's abilities, which uh, can be very beneficial depending on what you're playing against. I'm not going to say specifically, A, because I can't think of anything at the moment, but mostly because this video is going to last for a long time, so anybody coming back to this later is going to be like, well, that's not relevant to anymore. So yeah, Cheer Girl Fiona is, you know, a forbidden chalice on legs. Uh, so that's fun. Next up we have... The key card in this combo is Tricky Assistant, which is when she's played. On Vanarir, Counterblast 1, choose one of your and your opponent's rear guards each and put them into the soul. If two cards are put, she gets plus 10k to lend a turn. So the key is calling this on the opponent's turn, and the ways to do that are Doting Harlequin Maha if you have a unit with the Magia ability, which is kind of outdated, but it's the thing you can do. Lovely Companion, which only needs a Harry Vanguard, which is easier to do. And Hoopmaster, which just needs a copy of her in Drop Zone. Um, so any of those three can get Tricky Assistant out on the opponent's turn. Lastly, there's this new G guard they got, uh, Jester Demonic Beast of Flexion Chimera. So you put one or more cards from your hand into your soul, gets plus 10k for each card you put in, and then if you put two or more, your opponent chooses one of their standing rear guards and puts it into their soul. Again, this puts the onus on the opponent to make the decision, which sucks a little bit, but depending on what you're playing against, it could just be like, all right, the guy on one side's attacking, and the guy on the other side is also planning to attack. Like, for example, they attack with Dagda, they call something new on the other side. Their only option at that point is the thing they call. So you can potentially screw up the opponent's board pretty bad, depending when you do this. And then lastly for Dark Zone is Gear Chronicle, because Gear Chronicle has a lot of options. Uh, I already mentioned Hetero Round Dragon at the beginning of the video, so this was made almost as a plot twist. Like, they made a whole big show about, I forgot the name of that Gear Colossus thing, that like, sh made the deck in whatever order uh, Ryuzu chose it to be, and then Chrono sprung this on him and then shuffled his deck, which was like, oh shit, big, big plot twist thing. So the main thing is that this can put an opponent's big rear guard back in deck, and then they gotta call something random, which is usually like, their over <laughs> if we're being honest. That, that's like the easy one. There's Lost City Dragon, which when you intercept with it, you choose uh, one of your opponent's attacking rear guards, and then they put it back in their deck, and then call something with one great left. So this is kind of like Hetero Round Dragon, except you have to leave it on board. You can't just like guard it with your hand, it has to be an intercept. Um, it's generally thought to be a less good version of Hetero Round, especially because Hetero Round, as long as you can heal, you can get it any time. But it is an option. There's a Pandora Chimera, which uh, Counterblast tucks an opponent's back row rear guard. Again, not really super important, but it is an option. And then, this one's more recent, and this is one that I had to be told about. So Steam Maiden Lacina Bell is a grade one. Uh, when it's put into your bind zone from rear, you choose one of your opponent's grade one or less rear guards, and then the opponent puts it on bottom. There's a G-Guard called Bearlock, 
you don't have to discard a heal for, from it. You can call this card from face down with buying one or more rear guards with the sum of their grades being three or more. So if you bind Steam Maiden Lacina Bell for the cost of Bear Lock, you can then activate Lacina Bell's ability to talk something. That kind of occupies the same space as Pandora Chimera, but I'm just bringing up all the options. Not if they're the competitively viable ones. Alright, now we're, now we're getting into the big guys, so moving on to Witch of Cursed Talisman Etan, 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 the V-Series one that Shadow Paladin got in clan selection. Her first event, when placed on Van, um, or put on the guard circle, you can retire two rear guards of the witch, and then choose one of your opponent's standing rear guards and retire them. So, unfortunately, it means that you have to run a pretty xenophobic witch deck to consistently get that off. It's still something you can do uh, to interrupt the opponent's board. It's kind of like the Pale Moon G guard, where it only affects the standing rear guard. Um, but Shadow Paladin didn't have the ability to mess with the opponent's board on their turn before, so this is something new for the clan. The next thing we got up is Genesis. So Genesis has many convoluted ways of messing with the opponent's board, and some not so convoluted. For example, Reverend White Sorcerer Veratrum. When you guard with her, counter blast one, soul blast three. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards of the standing unit. Seems to be a pattern, I've noticed. Uh, your opponent looks at the top card of their deck and calls it on top of the chosen rear guard. Uh, your opponent's auto abilities don't activate from the call. So even if you make the opponent call something that was better than what they had on board, they don't even get to like do any on-call abilities. They can still do on attack abilities or continuous abilities or whatever, so sometimes it doesn't work on your favor. But in my experience, when someone does it to me, most of the time, it's like a crit trigger, and you're like, this sucks. I hate it. <laughs> um, or like your heal guardian or something. It's especially frustrating in that case. There are other ways to do it too, though. So, Secret Elsie is... I don't even know. It's technically a sentence. So, this takes the spot of one of your perfect guards. And then, her effect is when placed from hand to guard circle during the battle that your vanguard is attacked. Choose any number of cards from your soul, put them into your drop zone, and then call the same number of cards from the top of your deck to guard circle that you put in your drop zone. So, this is like something of a quintet wall, but here's the kicker. Mythic Beast Fenrir, the V-Series one, has an ability that when your card is put from your from your soul into drop zone, you can counterblast one, call one of those cards to rear. So the idea is to use Fenrir's ability off of Secret Elsie to call either Mythical Destroyer Beast Vanergand, who on play you soul blast and retire one of the opponent's rear guards, or Gold Gaon, which is a Cater Sanctuary card. So any United Sanctuary clan can use this thing. When placed on rear, soul blast and call a grade one card from your hand to rear guard circle. And the unit called for this cost gets plus five k on the turn. So the idea is, yes, you can call Vanergam from hand, so you can like you can get even more of a drop on the opponent. You can also call Witch of Frogs Melissa, who, when placed from hand, soul blast three. Your opponent looks at the same number of cards from the top of his or her deck as the number of his or her rear guards. Calls them to rear guards with units and then shuffles, and then the opponent's abilities don't activate from the call. So depending what it is, you can like straight rearrange the opponent's whole board. My friend Chris has done, done both of these things to me multiple times, and I gotta say, they're not fun <laughs> to play against. Um, Genesis weirdly has one of the most extensive uh, interruption libraries <laughs> for any of the clans in the game, and it's, it, it's just very weird. Going from the least amount of options per clan to the most amount of options because for Dragon Empire as a nation that's like the retire nation right? So there are so many options let's start with Nubatama so Rakuto Stealth Dragon Gakurakan I hope I'm pronouncing that right uh, is a G guard that allows you to dominate the opponent's grade 1 rear guard in the back row pull it to the front and then you can guard with it so that gets rid of an option on, on the opponent's board. Then we have Tachikaze. So Tachikaze has exactly one combo available to it, but it's super ridiculous. So you either have to use Regiment Dragon Regiodon or Darting Dragon Blue Sprint, which when they're 
tired by your opponent's card ability, you call one of their equip gauges to rear. And the way to do that on the opponent's turn is either Blockade Gengo or the more recent one, Regal Great Garter, which is like just a better version of Gengo. So you retire your Blue Sprinter Regiodon, which has literally any card in Dragon Empire ever that can retire on play. So like for example, I'll use Drag Ritter Al Alwalith. So when placed on rear, counter blast all my choose one of your opponents grade two or grade or rear guards and retire. Get it? So you have like let's say you have blue sprint with Alawith as its gauge. Riddle Grader retires blue sprint. You draw a card, it gets plus 10k shield. Blue Sprint's effect call Alawith to rear guard, Alawith's effect retires him. So that seems like a combo in a deck where like you don't really just tech in the Alawith and then that works out, but that is a thing the deck can do. So maybe in the future, when there's more consistent cards that uh, retire stuff on play, that doesn't interfere with Tachikaze's multi-attacking strategy, maybe that'll become more prevalent. So for Narukami, there's a bunch of ways to do it. First off, uh, for G-Guards, Impede Dragon and uh, Bulwark Dragon can both retire or bind stuff on the opponent's turn. That one's pretty straightforward. Unruly Dragon is for Eradicators only, but when you intercept with it, you choose one of your opponent's rear guards not attacking or boost. You kill it. Uh, seeing this on my opponent's board uh, makes me want to kill it immediately. I wasted attacks just trying to take it out as the opponent of the Narukami player, so it definitely does something. That's for sure. They also got a new G-Guard in Counteract Dragon, which I think was their new one in Premium Collection. Put on Guard Circle, your opponent chooses up to two of their front row rear guards, binds them. If they didn't bind two, it gets plus ten, and if they didn't bind any, it gets another plus ten. So nine times out of ten, it'll get the extra shield, but again, it can remove things from the opponent's board. But if you want something that's guaranteed removal, you're probably better off with Bulwark or Impede Dragon. Another thing you can do is, in a world with Unruly Dragon, Bulwark, Impede, there's also Eradicator First Thunder Draco Kid, which uh, is a grade zero that you can put it into your soul when your opponent's rear guard is put in the drop zone due to an effect from one of your cards. If you have a grade three or greater with Eradicator, you look up the 10 cards from the top of your deck, choose a sweep command, and ride it. And then sweep command's ability. So this is like old as uh, this strategy, but again, it is the thing you can do. And then sweep command's ability, the new one, the V series one. When placed on banner rear, soul blast one, choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards, bind it, and then you can pull something from the back of the front row. And then his other effect is on Vandar once per turn when your opponent's rear guard is bound. Uh, choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards, bind it, and if your damage is four more cards, counter blast, soul blast, get an imaginary gift. Call an eradicator from drop zone rear. So one fun thing you can do is let's say you have first thunder draco kid, right? You use I think bulwark would be the way to get that to work correctly. So you do bulwark, you retire the opponent's thing, you use first thunder draco kid, put it in soul, check top ten, right sweep command blow up two more things and then call Unruly uh, Dragon from the drop zone that you can then use to intercept to interrupt more. Like, again, incredibly obtuse, but it is a thing you can do. One more thing for United Sanctuary is the options that Angel Feather has available to it. So, most of them revolve around Holy Seraph Surreal, which is uh, the G-Guard that allows you to rescue check, so you heal one and damage check. And Black Relief Harassaron, which is on rear when your card is put in the drop zone from damage zone due to the effect of your rescue ability. So her and Surreal feed into each other. You can call the card that was put in the drop zone in the same column as her. So if you, let's say, heal Grand Heavenly Sword Alden off of Surreal with Harassaron on the board, you can use it to call Alden on the board, Alden's effect. When placed on rear, counter blast two, soul blast one, choose a card from your hand, call it to rear. So you can then call Freezing Granter, which is an angel feather grade two, that when placed from hand, soul blast one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, put it into your damage zone, and then your opponent chooses the card from the damage zone and kills it. So that's, you know, 
what is that, a three, four card combo, technically? One has to be in damage, one has to be on board, one has to be in hand. So not super consistent. There's also Ammunition Angel, which is, this is a quicker way to do it. So Ammunition Angel's effect, uh, this is what they're getting in V-Clan Selection 6. So when placed on Vanner Rear with a Protect Marker. So some Angel Feather variants want to put their Protect Markers on Rear Guard Circle. They have effects that benefit from it. You choose one of your opponent's rear guard and you may put it into their damage zone and then your opponent heals damage. So an easier way to do it is if you have Ammunition Angel in damage zone, Black or, uh, you know, Arataron on board, and then just use Serial to heal Ammunition Angel, Arataron calls it back. There you go. Then you can just remove something from the opponent's board. You would have to put Arataron in the back row in order to call Ammunition Angel to the front row where the protect marker is, or start putting your protect markers in the back row, whatever it is you want to do. But Angel Feather has ways to mess with the opponent's board on their turn, and it's only going to get more extensive as time goes on and you get more cards that can call things from damage zone. Maybe they'll get more on the opponent's turn. So that's pretty much it. As far as I can tell, this is the most disruption that I was able to find in the entire game of Vanguard. If you think I missed anything, or if it's years later and more stuff has happened, leave it below in the comments. Uh, leave a like, uh, tell a friend. If you want to support our channel and our podcast, patreon.com slash Thanks to Darren Cole, Josh, and Jeremy for being $10 patrons.